Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast in another one of my games here on um, Slag Pit. We have Crota vs Kjarn. This game was taken from yesterday's matchup on April 11th. It is one of those um, games that I did live stream for you guys, but I thought I would go into the game and talk a little bit more about it and my thought process behind the game. Um, a lot of the viewers liked it, so I thought I would shoutcast the game. So we, we have Kjarn spawning as the blue Protoss player at the 12 o'clock position. Meanwhile, I am here as the red Terran player at the 9 o'clock position. Now, a lot of you guys out there have been wondering how I play StarCraft and what my thought process is behind the entire game. And in general, how in general how I play and being able to delve into my thoughts and into my strategies. Now, first of all, here on Slag Pit or against Protoss in general, I generally like to scout a little bit later because I know that I can get away with scouting later. The reason behind it is your SCV can scout, um, just purely depending upon the timing. Um, and a little bit later because there are no stalkers until that cybernetics core is up. So until that cybernetics core is up, you don't have to um, really worry about losing your scouting SCV. Probes on the other hand, or scouting against a Terran player on the other hand, um, there's two reasons why you want to scout early. One, you want to try to harass the, uh, the unit that's trying to build the barracks early on if possible. And secondly, if you can harass him, excuse me, if you can harass, then you can delay other um, production buildings. Now, based upon the timing on this, um, I realized that my opponent most likely has not done a, a close spawn based because I have not seen a probe come into my base just quite yet. So I do scout in a non-normal position and I will quickly find my opponent here. This only normally works against um, platinum and diamond level play. If you're gold or below, <clears throat> don't be surprised if your opponent does not scout you out and when you scout in the wrong direction it doesn't find. So you can see my SCV pretty much arrives at the same time as his probe does and I'm able to get a lot of key and site information. I'm leaving, I will be coming back up that ramp in just a second to take a little bit more of a look around to make sure that there's not a second assimilator down or what exactly his build will be. The pro also going to try to come back in as well, but I am going to get a marine and I'm making sure that there are no proxy pylons inside my base. So if you take a look around, you're going to quickly see and that is what I'm trying to do. I'm tr trying to look around on the inside of my base, trying to see if there's a proxy pylon and I will quickly see that there is none and I will also shut down that one pro that was scouting out. SCV still wandering around on the inside here and I can pretty much just take a look at the Kjarn's base and figure out what he's trying to do. The Zealot is out, but if you're very careful with your SCV, you can actually, um, as long as you don't do any tight corners, you can actually um, escape without taking any damage from that Zealot. Now, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be training up that Reaper. The reason why I want that Reaper is I want to do a follow-up to the scouting. Um, I know that my opponent most likely will have a stalker out, so I'm already ready to try to trade this Reaper for some probes. I want to try to equalize and neutralize that trade. If I can take down two probes, that's great. If I can shoot down three, that would be better as I want to um, try to slow down the advantage that Chrono Boost gives to my opponent. You can see 23 Harvesters compared to 20. And that is the reason why I'm trying to um, train up this Reaper. The Reaper getting as many kills as possible. Going to come up here quickly. Make sure you do not focus onto any units that are going into the Assimilator. The reason behind that is if you try to focus down a guy that's on the Assimilator, um, he can hide in the Assimilator pretty um, easily. I'm trying to get that last shot off on that probe over there, but the probe is able to escape. I'm trying to get that final hit, but no, the Stalker does move a little bit more quickly along the inside curve. I was able to get three shot offs though. So you can see I am now even in terms terms of the SCV versus probe count and I also have mules so that will definitely help me out he is down to 23 and um, 22 probes versus 23 another reason why I want to execute with that early um, reaper and get some kills off is if they're trying to do a four gate um, they usually stop their probe production and if they go from 20 probes down to 17 that really significantly hurts them in how much they are able um, to mine and they're not going to be really able to support that four gate rush at that six minute mark now back in my base i'm trying to um, change up the strategy a little bit you saw it last time how i went for a triple rax build this particular game i am going for hellions with that blue <clears throat> blue flame research that does help out significantly and what the Hellions are also good at is that the Hellions also move very, very quickly. So by having these fast-moving Hellions, I can, in addition, get off another very fast scout. 
The only problem is Hellions are horrible at taking down buildings um, just because they deal very, very little damage. You can see now that I'm trying to split up my Hellions on the other side of these vents. This will allow me to see when those units are coming in. And as soon as I see those Stalkers, I, I retreat knowing that I cannot um, handle all too much. Army-wise, he does have a much larger army at this point with a decent number of Stalkers and a decent number of sentry, uh, uh, what, of sentries and, and sentries and other units. But uh, coming up this ramp, though, the, he does not want to try to come up this ramp because I have a decent number of units sitting right there. Um, the main problem is that those sentries would get toasted very, very easily. I am going to pick up my units, though, and my, I know that my opponent feels that he has me contained. And by sitting outside my base, um, he feels pretty safe. He's, he's going to try to just um, test that ramp. But in that time, I am now going to move out and try to go for a drop. If he simply charged up this ramp, I would have a bunker in place. I would be able to get some SCVs over. And I know that his force fields would deal some damage. I am also getting siege tanks. Even without siege mode, they have a range of 7. So that is going to be very significant as well. So the unit is now trying to walk up that ramp, taking a, um, taking a fair share of damage. Um, siege tank now moving back. But now in come that. Hellions and the Hellions deal so much damage across multiple probes and um, if you're able to line it up correctly if they're you're trying to get them all in a single file line trying to get as much damage as possible you can see how much damage and how many probes I am getting just constantly trying to line up that flash attack and I essentially get out almost every single probe he only has two left the two probes that were sitting in the assimilator and then the Hellions try to retreat but he does come back and try to and try to return home. At this stage in the game, I know that he has the stronger army, and that is why I'm not going to be pushing out. I know that as long as I take my time, build a command center in my base, and slowly macro up my army, I will be able to win out. He's only mining at 100, 100 minerals a minute with only two harvesters, and he has that second nexus, but even still, that's going to be difficult. He should, of course, be trying to chrono boost in order to increase his um, increase his production, but that's not going to work out well. I'm continuing to macro up as quickly as I can. Siege tanks, marines, marauders, hellions. Those hellions are going to be able to get a lot of damage even across those zealots and splashing across those sentries. So th that is a significant amount of damage that they are able to deal. The marauder also coming in. They have concussive shells. I am also getting siege tech as well. And I bring back this medevac. Now continuing to just um, build up as strong of the army as I can. And um, making sure I have a missile turret. Um, to make sure that there are no observers nearby. The observers would pretty much shut down any advantage that I, that I currently have at this stage. And I'm trying to reposition these siege tanks. Um, I guess th this gap right here, even though it looks fairly large, is not large enough for a siege tank to pass through. I, wanna, I wanted a siege tank here and a siege tank here in order to be able to blast down. I can get some siege tech, but I know that my opponent is still very far behind in terms of his economy. I'm just trying to contain him in as long as possible. The Marauders have a range of 7 inside that bunker and getting a lot of damage across those Zealots. The Zealots have a base 1 armor though, able to absorb a lot of damage. And now with siege tech, I'm in a very strong position. So Everett, any time that um, your opponent is trying to contain you within, his, within your base, um, be careful to try to go for a drop. A second drop now coming into play. I have Marauders and also Hellions. The Marauders are there to try to counter any uh, Stalkers that come in. A Marauder with two Medivacs, or sorry, two Marauders and a Medivac are able to get a lot of damage. And then the Hellions are there to um, try to go after those probes. So you can see the Marauders going after more and more of those units. The Hellions are going to be able to move out as well. They're going to look for those probes as the Marauders um, are going to stay, stay close over here. The units are going to be once again moving back over here. The Hellions, looking for those additional probes, sees that there are probes down over here. Just going to try to get even more of those probes. And you can see with that splash damage, just trying to get a decent range, trying to make sure that all of those probes get toasted very, very easily. Down to two probes left. And there they go. There's the last two. And there's the GG. So being very, very careful here on Slag Pits, I was able to take this win. Um, Kajorn, he did not push up that ramp early on, and that was one of the reasons why he had such a difficult time. He did have the larger army, but it's always very difficult to try to charge up a ramp, especially against a Terran player, with um, because you have limited sight. The Marauders with the range of seven inside bunkers, and those Stalker, and then they also get slowed down by those concussive shells. 
you essentially get about four to eight free shots on those units before um, that you can the other units behind them can see and then they still have to on top of that deal with any marines you may have siege tanks you may have you can see i also added banshees into the group as well banshees a very very high dps unit very effective at dealing with those zealots on the ground as the marauders and the siege tanks are able to deal with those stalkers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay. I know it seemed really one-sided, but during the game, it was really back and forth. I, I really had to gamble on a lot of those uh, maneuvers, uh, picking up my four Hellions, picking up it in the meta pack, and doing that drop without him attacking at that, at that moment was very, very critical. Um, if he had tried to attack, it, it could have been a different story. The SEVs would have had to come off the mineral line. Um, he could have placed down force fields, um, further um, increasing the amount of damage I would have taken as well. But those bunkers with a decent amount of armor and that plus one range really helped me out in trying to defend against this rush. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay and game here on Slag Pits.